Hi, this is Wynn Claybaugh. Welcome to my Best of Masters weekly audio blog for AmericanSalon.com. Next up is one of my favorite clips from the last 20 years of inspiring interviews from Masters Audio Club. I'd gone to a meeting, a breast cancer meeting, and I noticed that the women were talking to each other and talking to the physician who was presenting, but no one was paying attention to these four or five forlorn little husbands that were sitting there in pain of their own. So I said to someone, is there a, a group for men, spouses, partners? And uh, someone from the American Cancer Society said, no, do you want to start one? <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So you know where it went from there. Anyways, I became involved with the American Cancer Society and started uh, mentoring women as a volunteer. And um, then I would sit on panels, discussion panels, that kind of thing. But I didn't have the right initials after my name because I was a patient and I was an accountant. What could I possibly know about breast cancer other than the fact that I had it? So that made me mad. So I went back to school and got my doctorate. So now when Dr. Feinstone speaks, people listen. And with that, I continued my volunteering but um, I was offered the position at Hogue Cancer Center uh, to do what I was doing in a volunteer manner uh, as a professional. And I've been at Hogue over 10 years now, and it's my great privilege to do what I do. I meet amazing women at difficult times in their life, and I work with amazing people. It's a very, very nice place to be if you're going to have this terrible diagnosis. Now, you said that you were underage, so you wouldn't have fallen on that radar Correct. of annual screenings or whatever. Mm-hmm. My friend Kate was way underage right. in her you know, early 30s. Right. Um, can you talk about that? Well, the issue is that, you know, the reality is, if you look at the data, 80% of women that are diagnosed with breast cancer are over the age of 50. So the recommendation is to start your screening mammograms at age 40. All well and good. Unfortunately, that other 20% fall in the 30s and 40s. And unfortunately, when young women get this disease, it's usually very aggressive. Uh, Why is that? Mostly because uh, most breast cancers are estrogen-driven. Estrogen is the hormone that fuels the growth of these cells. And, of course, young women have a lot more circulating estrogen than um, older women do. And uh, it's just a different disease in young women. It's a different disease in black women. Black women are not diagnosed at the numbers that white women are diagnosed, but they are diagnosed younger, and their disease is quite different, as it is with black men in prostate cancer. So it's, it's genetic and different cultural populations present differently. With a young woman, the the tragedy is not just the aggressiveness of the disease and what she's going to go through, but in many cases, these are young women with young families or at least anticipating having young families. And the saddest part is that not only do they often lose their breast, breasts in many cases, um, but they lose the ability to have children, and that's tragic. Mm-hmm. That's tragic. Can you give us uh, some facts? Give us some statistics on what is happening. Sure. Almost 200,000 women a year in this country are diagnosed with breast cancer. That's one woman every three minutes, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. That's a lot of women. Yeah. We're making amazing strides. The surgeries are uh, less invasive. The procedures are less difficult, but they're still invasive and they're still difficult. Less is just a matter of degree. You know, with Kate, Kate's a lovely young woman who had a very difficult surgery. Losing a body part is not easy, and the treatment for this is not easy. So when I say the treatment is better, and the surgery is less invasive, that is true, but it doesn't mean it's easy. Right. It doesn't mean it's easy. And then the chemotherapy, 
uh, can throw you into premature menopause, or very often young women are suggested that they have their ovaries removed. And, you know, as I mentioned before, to step out of the world of wellness into the world of cancer and then be told again, you're going to lose your breasts and you're going to lose the ability to have children. That's awful. Mm -hmm. No one should have to face that. Mm -hmm. Are we making strides? We are. Do we have a cure? We don't. Will there be a cure? Not in my lifetime. It's too complicated. The more we learn, the less we know. There's no magic bullet here. We're treating individually is much better. We're learning more that Kate can't be treated the same as Susan, who can't be treated the same as Jane, but it's still hard. And there's still lots to learn and lots to do. 